So, death and divorce. Eh? Hey. I think that's a good thing to talk about. <laughs> death and divorce. And why we haven't been around for well, weeks. That's the death bit, isn't We it? haven't done a podcast for So a we time. haven't done a podcast for an inconceivable amount of time because on November the 25th, my dear nanny Thelma died, um, which was a huge blow despite her being 94 because she was such a major part of mine and all of our life, a huge, huge part of our lives mm. and a majorly important part of mine because she doubled up as a mother. So It's interesting though because we've still done Facebook and YouTube but we haven't done the podcast, mm. have we? Why is that? don't know, I think... So you don't want to talk directly about it maybe? Well, I think we do try to be really honest as honest as one can be or as, as one ever is with oneself when we talk on, on these things. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I think it's quite, this is quite personal in a way that a lot of the Facebook stuff sometimes isn't because there's a lot going on or there's a lot of other members of the family. We're kind of opening our hearts and throwing it mm. all out there. And also there's that sort of a, as a mark of respect. I mean, at the end of the day, Nanny Thelma thought, what the hell was all this stuff that we were doing? You know, so I think... Mm. You know, yeah, it hasn't felt right. It just hasn't it? felt right. But I suppose it is one of the tests of a marriage. I mean, they say that very sadly, a lot of marriages don't make it through grief. Mm. I think a lot of people that, it's terribly sad, but I think a lot of people that lose a child, often their marriage doesn't make it. Mm, that's right. Because. Grief is a hard thing to live with, isn't it? But I think, I also think because she was my nan and our daughter's great great grandmother, it's made us both think a lot about our parents and their vulnerability. It makes mm -hmm. you think about the order of things. It's made us think about our mortality. I think it's made the girls, Maddie, Kiki, Flo, and Izzy, have all looked at us, certainly on the day of the funeral, they've all looked at us in a different way since, not in a we're getting you ready for the grave type way. But that but, we can look, they can... But, yeah, yeah, but, the, you know, vulnerability surrounds all of us. And I think in a relationship, it's interesting that we haven't really talked about marriage or staying married for now because, you know, so much in life is fragile and so much in life is, you know, you can have the death of a relationship, can't you? You can. And that's what we're seeking to avoid. We are. And, and this is, I think, yesterday. What was the date yesterday? What was the date yesterday? 3rd of January. 2nd of January yesterday. 2nd of January is the day Divorce that, day. Is divorce day the day people are most likely to consult a lawyer? Is that and right? Do you, know, do you know why that is? It's divorce day in any year is the first working day of the year because it's when the most calls go into lawyers requesting proceedings to be started. For a divorce. Wow. So that was yesterday. I haven't received my papers yet. So I'm kind of thinking I'm all right. Have you Just filed for them? For now. For now. Maybe you've sent them second class. For now. But it's interesting, isn't it? I wonder why, I suppose people just try and keep it together for Christmas. I think also, I always think Christmas is a really romantic time, but also it's a very high pressure time. And a lot of people, I think, spend a lot of their year avoiding each other and avoid spending time with each other and suddenly they're together all the time and that can be so stressful. Yeah, I mean, we're quite lucky in that we don't mind each other's company. I, mean, I would imagine that if you were with someone... I mean, the thing that never ceases to amaze me about a lot of couples is how formal they can be. Between two people who are very close, you do the most intimate things physically, you have the most intimate things childrenly, you, 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 you claim undying love in the most intimate of legal ways, which is a, 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 you know, a wedding, a marriage, and yet I sometimes hear couples out in public, they're so sort of formal. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and that's not a judgment, I'm just, I, 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 so it makes me reflect on how unusual we are. Well, it couldn't be a judgment because many a time people hear the most terrible row oh, between yeah. us. Can you imagine what people must say about us? Yes. Can you imagine well, there are times being I've... that? vile to each other, that well, rude to each other, that as vile as you can be to basic. me. I know, I mean, it's outrageous how you get. I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah, but you always deserve it. Oh, right, okay. But, um, but yeah, so that formality. So, 
So maybe the reason for that is if, if there is a degree of formality in a lot of relationships, maybe, um, you know, Christmas, Christmas. is, Christmas is, a, is, the, is the great equaliser. Yeah, you're all seeing each other. You're all up close to each other, warts and all. But also a lot of people I know say that they really differ on how they bring up their kids or how much the kids should be given at Christmas and all yeah. that. Can you imagine all that tension around... I can imagine all that tension around Christmas is very... I mean, we've had our tense times this Christmas. Well, I can't stand you and your family when they say, you all say, let's do Secret Santa. It's like, what? I've never Tight said do Secret Santa. Because you can't be bothered to think about people. Excuse me, I have never said Secret Santa. Secret Santa is for people who can't be bothered to think about presents for others. Mark, for some people it works. It's not about, it's not about, a lot of the, the argument back is often it's about cost. Well, you don't know, it's not, a gift isn't about how much you spend, you can make something. Mm. But I think making and thinking of lots of people is, is no, no bad thing. They're, look, I'm saying this as the most antisocial person there is. I'd love Secret Santa theoretically, wouldn't I? But we go off, we go off piste. Divorce yeah. day. So divorce day. I mean, the thing is... I was trying to think when you said it was divorce day yesterday, I was thinking, how many times have I actually considered divorce? Wow. <laughs> well, I can't answer that, can I? How many times have you thought about divorce with us? Uh, well, last week, about six times. I think you've thought of divorce more than me. <laughs> I think that's, that's fair to say. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You threaten it at the drop of a hat. No, I don't anymore. So does I that think mean every you think time of it I've, less? I think every time I've said it in the past, because this is about... The last thing we want to sound like is to a smug couple that are just, everything's perfect, because that is not the case. That is not the case. No. We do have a good marriage, but we work hard at it, and we've had really difficult, difficult times. And in those first five years, six years maybe, whenever I said I want a divorce, I really did want a divorce. Mm. Because I felt like there was no way of making you understand or making me understand or whether we can, were compatible or whether we could ever make it work or whether we... So why didn't we? We're just too fiery. Um, well, I always loved you, but also because of Maddie. If we hadn't had Maddie early on in our relationship, we would have got divorced. Yeah, I agree. Because I would have walked away. Because my my temper and my I would have walked away. Mm. And so every time at my lowest times when I just thought I I can't do this anymore and I've got to leave this man and I just saw that little girl and I thought I can't do it. Oh no, God, that's that's a shell shocking realization to make on camera. You've never said it quite like that before. I'm oh, sorry, it's true. Yeah, I know. I feel a little bit sad about that. But why? That's good to interrogate because I think that's a problem with what people think about when they look at a good marriage. They go, oh, well, you know, it's right for them. We, you have to get there. And I so mean, if somebody were listening to this and in a really low point with their marriage, okay, let's put to one side if somebody is a brutal pig or somebody is a total cow mm. or whatever, where there's no hope. Of course, then you have to finish the marriage. There's no point staying for the sake of the yeah. kids if you really are a couple that there's no way it can work. But I, if you listened to what I said, I said, I loved you. I really didn't like you for a period of time. And your problems were overwhelming me, mm. your depression, your addictions, and mm. I was utterly exhausted. I was struggling at being a new mom. I was struggling at being an older mom. I was struggling with all my own issues because mm. I've got loads of issues myself. It's not just about your issues. And I, I couldn't see a way how we were ever going to get out of the cycle of jealousy and arguing and all of that, but we stuck at it. And we made it work. Mm. That's what a marriage is. A marriage. I mean, there's very few people that get married, and it's all just wonderful and lovely forever, is it? No. It's about if you really see the heart of somebody and you really love the heart of them. Can you make yourself stay to make it work? Mm. But if you look into the heart of somebody and you go, actually, this person, this man or woman, has the heart of a walnut, and they are never gonna 
really hear me, yeah, or listen to me, or ever be really kind to me, then I think you have to walk away, children or not. Okay, but it's still a it's still a shocker to hear that. Although I hear it, and you know, I don't think you've ever even said it quite so bluntly when we were going through family rehab and all that kind of stuff. I have. Not not quite like that. Well, when we went to marriage guidance counselling, I said I, w I am going to leave. I oh, know, and then you left. Physically, the room. <laughs> so, okay, so you say that's no, really no, no. upsetting I mean, I, and hard. Why? I, what? Tell, me what, tell me what you're thinking and feeling. No, 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 it's not a shocker, as in, don't tell me that it's not true. It's mm. just, I suppose, that's another nice thing about a relationship, isn't it? You, you find things out. I mean, when you've been together as long as we have, 15, 16 years now, and you've been through what feel like so many of their, you know, so many sort of epic journeys of, you know, striving to get through this hell or that hell or that agony or that issue or that addiction or, you know, that, you know, yeah, the, the self-esteem issues I had and the inability to control my jealousy and the, the seething sort of fear and paranoia and all of these kind of things. When I look back at it, I sort of think, of course I understand. If, if I was anyone else advising you at the time, I'd have said divorce it. This is a, a fucking, this is an absolute fucking nightmare. Do you remember when I used to say to you sometimes, when I thought you were being so unreasonable, and I'd say to you, just imagine mm. for a minute that I'm not your wife, mm. that I'm your daughter. What advice, hang on, what advice would you be giving your daughter? And it always used to stump you It completely short. floored me all the time. And actually, I think that's quite a good thing for anybody that's listening. If, you, if you're in that situation with your husband or with your wife, and say that to them. Say, how would you advise your grown-up child if they were in this marriage and they mm. were in this argument? What would you say? A, I would say for any woman, and it's mostly women who watch this, it's a very disarming line to use, which is, you know, would you say that to your daughter? Because, I mean, for any father of a daughter, we have very clear, very clear boundaries on what we want and don't want to happen to our our daughters well you, just the no, jealousy an, thing absolutely if your daughters came in and said absolutely. oh my god in He's, the old days yeah. when you used to want to you know when you would used to follow up on me and everything that was the worst part of our marriage was all of mm. that i hated that mm. you would absolutely flip if one of the oh girls god. came and said that a bloke had been doing no that. so so i do look back and i do think you know I suppose there's an element of when I look back at that time when it's clouded in addiction, but let's not forget a lot of that was also not in the throes of addiction, but I had addictive thinking. I was white knuckling, I was trying to control my drinking, I was trying to control not, you know, not taking, you know, when you've taken drugs as well in your life, you know, that has a massive impact on your paranoia. Yeah, paranoia. Massively. Um, but you know, there'll be a lot of people listening that have very paranoid partners mm, that, 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 that haven't. That don't, that. No, 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 Parano no, absolutely. I mean, even Maddie talks about how there is just this thing on people mm. checking up on each other. Mm. Jealousy kills love. Yeah. It kills it stone absolutely. dead. Absolutely. And, and, you know, I am eternally grateful that you stood it out. Stu yeah, you know, you, that didn't. you stuck it out, stood it out, stuck it out, and... Yeah, I mean, I, I think there, but for the grace of God, go I that, that you did. And, and But I hope that you did because you felt that there was genuinely someone in there who didn't like what I was being, didn't like how I was making you feel, didn't like the impact this was having on my children. I mean, there, there was no... And I think if I'm honest, I probably knew at the time. So the paranoia was feeding the paranoia because I was probably actually yeah. genuinely picking up on the fact yeah. that you didn't want to be with me. But what and about... I was worried about you not wanting to be with me. Yeah, but you me. were making it true because I just started to not want to be with you. But I wonder if that resonates about... for other people. I wonder if that resonates. What about when, because I trusted you, you saw that as me not loving you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but you trust me. That means you don't love but me I because it, you had a warped idea. No, no. That jealousy meant love and it doesn't. Absolutely. It's the complete opposite. And I also had a warped idea that unless you were worried about me leaving you, it couldn't really mean anything. Yeah. Not that that meant that I wanted to kind of play games or anything, but yeah. I mean, it was a warped, infantile slightly masculine masculine way of possessed possessive i mean i would say that my possessiveness and control issues came from a not wanting to lose rather than a wanting to control but it ended up suffocating and controlling it didn't come from a place of i, I don't fundamentally have no I, I don't fundamentally dislike a strong woman
but I was struggling with the fact that you were a strong woman because I haven't yeah. met someone as strong as you yeah. in so many ways and so many areas. Um, and on the one hand, that's what drew me to you. And on the other, and I think this maybe resonates for a lot of people around divorce. I often think it's quite funny how the things that are the main ingredients in any divorce are usually the things that originally drew you to someone. Oh God, you are absolutely, uh, duh, all women know that about men. Yeah. The thing that they love about you, they then try and change because they don't want anyone else to love it about yeah, you. Absolutely, absolutely. I remember once going to same with guy. It's the same, hang on, it's the same in reverse about women and men. I mean, I've often been in relationships where the silliness, the gregariousness, the outwardness of, of everything about me that made me charismatic, fun and all these kind of things were the very things that they sought to dampen, control and, put, yeah. and extinguish. It's bad. I once went out with this guy. He used to say to me, do you mind not laughing too much when you go out tonight? He actually used to say that to me. Well, I, I hate it when you do yee-haw. Well, you are quite loud and curly-haired. And when you're off the telly, I mean, there is an additional detail that when we go out, you are ne we are never private. We're going on to too many different subjects. I know, I know, but anyway. We're using up our podcasts for the year. We've no. done death, divorce, jealousy. But death and divorce. So divorce day. So yeah, we, we, we kind of covered, covered everything. No, not really, because you've never said to me when you've wanted to divorce ah, me. Well, I was thinking, I was thinking there was one. I remember vividly one time I thought, oh my At God. Paddington Station. I'm going to have to, no, 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 I'm going to have to, sorry, I am going to have to leave this woman because she's, it was in the middle of your menopause and I remember, oh my God, I had come out. In the and, middle of my menopause? You out, thought about divorcing me? I had, Are you kidding me? I had come out of a meeting in central London. I was somewhere near the Trocadero. I remember walking past, I can vividly remember standing in the fire escape of the Odeon Panton Street as all I can say is, you had so lost all perspective on whatever it was you were irate about. I had done nothing wrong on this occasion, but you had gone so far in your assumption that you oh, were... Oh, was that when you were in the cinema and you had to come out of the no, cinema? No, no, I wasn't in the cinema. I was, coming out of a, I was coming from another meeting. And oh, yeah. you, were in a, you were in an absolute... It was like speaking in tongues, you know, when you hear... Blah, 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 and you were like that. And as I was holding it, and you were saying, this is it, this is it. And I was going, no, 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 this is, this is absolutely... And I remember hanging up thinking... I don't ever want to see this woman again. I literally don't think I can go home and see this woman. And then you got hungry and came over to dinner. And then I was a bit, yeah, a bit pecky. I thought, I'm sure I'll be eating the wrong thing if I go to prep. So I better get her advice. It's so is Sachinia. that the only time you've thought about divorce? No, there have been many times when we've been rowing where I've thought, yeah. yes. Because you go, you go so extreme. You I go know. So extreme. I and mean, you go... You go personal. But the thing is, is because you usually don't, you I've do the opposite. You do the so opposite of Michelle in... Obama. As others go high, you go so low. Yeah, but it's usually because I've kept so too low. much inside and then I blow. Well, that's no one's fault but your own. I mean, don't... Well, no, it is. It, 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 because I'll be but not women, saying... Women always use that as a reason for why they hurl it the entire kitchen sink at you because often women are trying to keep the peace because they don't want to have a bicker Darling. they don't want to have an argument That's in front of the kids so you, go, so, so you think oh I'll just oh, I'll let that go I'll let that oh. go and then it builds That's the chair not me farting That builds But can I also say this idea that women keep the peace there's this somehow idea that, that that men don't have a vested interest in keep of course we do Yeah but men tend to back like if I ever say to you listen can we talk about something you always go oh my god Oh no, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I'm panicking now, I'm panicking now. Because So tone. women prefer to get things said and men just get petrified when you say you want to get things said. Yeah, but I find that when you get things said, it's, it's accompanying every, you targeting every single vulnerability you know I've got. Well, sorry. And that's when I want to divorce you. Sorry, that's, you know. But, I mean, you know, there's been nothing about you fundamentally that I've not liked or, do you know what I mean? You've never behaved, you've never been a philanderer or a, an abuser or a... No, but you haven't. You haven't been any of those things. I mean, you know, so what, what would there be cause for... Why would one want to leave someone who hasn't done, done anything overt? There are moments where I find you intolerable. Mm. That's about it. Okay. Until next time, we will be very regular now, every week, once a week, every Wednesday. Week? Doesn't it go out on a Wednesday? Every week. Anyway, for as long as we're married, who knows how long that'll be.
Bye.